think I paid like four or five hundred for these. They look good though, so they decent. I wouldn't even have known. Like I wouldn't know what you were shooting with. Yeah, uh, well, the I feel like when you when you put it on YouTube, like it's decent. <laughs> Where it really starts getting kind of weird is like when you start making reels, and then you know you got to stretch it. Uh huh. So once you stretch 1080p, it's not really. Right. It's pretty low quality. You know what I mean? What are you filming with? Um, Sony A7R3. Yeah. yeah. You, you do everything with that? Was it like you do everything with like yeah, the video, same lens and shit? Pictures. Yeah. And I got. A, uh, I don't really know. I ain't really like camera specific. Like as far as like lenses and all that. I know I got a 50 because that's what it came with, and then I bought another one for like a more wider view. But I don't know what numbers it is for. Real. Yeah. For me, I'm I'm kind of more focused on like just the substance right now. Yeah. Cause I feel like it's easy to it's easy to upgrade cameras. I mean, I've, you gotta get the money first, but like to spend money is easy. Mm. But to figure out like the substance, like the theme of your shit, like how you want it to feel, like mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of um, we're focused on that kind of right now. Yeah. You, sometimes you just gotta use what you got. Cause some people will have a camera that's not so good and be like, I ain't gonna make a podcast until. Mm. But whole time you could have been making a hundred episodes like y'all be doing. So just use what you got. That's how I be feeling. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that that goes to like people want it to be perfect yeah. from day one. Yeah. And it's never gonna be perfect. Right. Day one. Like you bro, like I mean, I feel like I'm still getting better at this. Like even when I look back at like the early episodes, I feel like I still have a lot of growth to do. But as you can see that it just takes time. Right. You can't really good get good at anything. Just yeah, so you do it anyway. Without putting the time in. Yeah. Fast. Yeah. Oh shit, my bad. Nigga. How did shit for start for you, bro? Like uh, we kinda jump around a little bit. Um I think I met you the first time I met you was at your studio in Norfolk. In Norfolk, the one like up the stairs. Actually, you have a, you have a new studio now, right? Nah, I just be mobile with it. Yeah. And I I be using this big studio out Hampton, but I don't have one of my own because I try to slow down for a little bit because we was just doing too much. That's why you like. That's why you left that other studio. I mean, we left that one particularly because like rent situation. Like we was paying like three thousand a month at that jump, and then we just so happened to be and late that, one that, month, is, and he was that tripping. a lot for like. I mean, I area? feel like it. Like yeah. I ain't never. <laughs> I'm gonna pay three bands. I'd rather be in my house paying that much. You know what I'm saying? But we did it with the hopes for it to work. Cause you know we had all them rooms upstairs, so we was trying to turn every room into something. But it just didn't go the way we wanted it to. And like then, like you run out the whole space and just run it out to other people. I mean, like we, we was gonna try to set up our own, on like a little print shop, making T-shirts, like a little graphic station, the beat room, and all that. But we just never built it up to that point. And I think it's because the overhead was just so high. It's like you got to make three bands before you can even consider it profit. Then you got to pay cable, all everything that's included. So it was just kind of too much. But we still took a chance on it, though. And then and then it's like, yeah, then like in a studio with like you working with mostly like probably upcoming artists. Right. Which is probably people that, like myself, probably don't have that much money. So right. it's almost like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I feel like you've been so you've been, you've been making a living off your off yeah, your I've art been for living like living off of us since like 2010. Yeah, what's what's that been like? What's like I don't know. Like some just, challenges? Or, nah, it was know. um, it ain't really no challenges. I just remember I used to work at Taco Bell, and for like a year, because I started performing around the time I was working, and once we start performing, people start asking who record y'all music. So that's how it turned into running the studio, but. I used to be at work and two hundred dollars called my phone. I'm sitting here making eight fifty an hour. So I just like I told my mom I'm gonna quit, and she was supportive of it. So I just quit and just kept going for real. Yeah, yeah, I make a lot of money. I I'm can't sure. as hard at managing it though, but I made a lot of money though. Like having to reinvest it. And I mean, just managing it, like especially when when you know the money coming. Like so, it's like like let's say if I made two hundred today. I, I'll spend two hundred because I don't make two hundred tomorrow. But I could have mm. saved some. You know what I mean? All yeah. these times I could have saved it because it's the, just the fact that you know you can make it back tomorrow. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get these shoes. I'm gonna go ahead and do this, and then then you look back some years later. It's like damn, yeah, the, 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 the pile's still empty. Yeah, like, shit. That's exactly how it be too. So that's like a phase I'm in in my life right now. Was just like learning how to be like an actual adult, like with the adult things. It's like because I ain't never paid attention to finances or nothing because my goal was always I'm going to get rich and then I could just pay for everything, pay, fix the credit, all that. But it don't work like that all the time. So I'm just in the season where I'm trying to get myself together as a man so everything else around me can flourish. Does your, does your, like, does your wife play like an important role in that? I mean, she, she, like she the best with the money for real. Like she... Yeah. she Take care of the bills and stuff. We both go half on things, but as far as the person that's paying it, that's her thing. Like, I don't even have the patience to sit on the phone and wait and all that. I, I, it's just not me. But I'm trying to learn how to, so I can assist her as well. She shouldn't have to do everything, huh? Yeah. I seen she be making music with you too. Like, you got your kids in there with yeah. you. Like, bro, yeah, but touch on that a little bit. I feel like it's like, to me, like, when I see stuff like that, it's like figuring out, it's like people figuring out how to be creative as they get older. 
It's like just because yeah. you're getting like older doesn't mean you have to stop being creative or go into this nine to five life where you can't like, like you also you teaching your kids how to do it. I seen the video. It was like uh, I think you had the cords. Like yeah. laid out on the ground. Yeah. Like where is the XLR yeah. or whatever? Try, like, just trying to make it fun for him for real. Cause I, I think about how much I had to do on my own, like with the help of people like G White teaching me stuff along the way. But you know, imagine my mom would have started me like even just knowing I could make music when I was six. Like I probably would be way more advanced than where I'm at. So I think like the job of like a parent is to set your kids up for the best possible future. So it's like. I could be, you know, leaving it up to TikTok to teach them. I could leave it up to school to teach them, but I seen you. My bad to catch up. I seen you really against TikTok. You like we we took the TikTok way, gave him the Bible. Yeah, I bro, because <laughs> it's 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 real. Like I people love it, I love people it. ignore it, but this episode uh, is sponsored by Three TV, uh, a multidisciplinary pro- bloopers on the ad. This is our first ad, so we're gonna get this right. Um, this episode is sponsored by 3TV, located in Richmond, Virginia. They're a multi-purpose uh, production studio, so they do like graphic design, they shoot, edit uh, like videos, commercials. You can rent out the space, shoot your own stuff. They have kind of like the white backgrounds, different like backgrounds, different sets. If you're in the Richmond area and are looking for a studio, hit them up. You can use our code to get 20% off. So in the promo code section, just put off world. They sent us a, like a pretty cool commercial too that they, they put together. So we're gonna play that and get back to the episode. From the people, for the people. Our expertise comes through our authenticity. Creatively expressing our story. Building a community around creativity. If you give a kid a phone, like, the world can show them whatever they want. And you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't make, uh, what's that stuff called? Slime? They don't make slime because they thought of it on their own. They do it because they seen it on this. I remember one night my son came in the room with his lips mad swollen because he had a seen something on the internet where they oh, did probably a the Kylie Jenner challenge. Thing, whatever it was. I remember was. that. I remember that. Yeah. But I'm just like, you know what I'm saying? I be thinking about stuff like that. I'm like, bro, I could have been teaching him Pro Tools in the time he was learning that, you know what I'm saying? Which is something that's going to uh, set him up to make money because for one, you need money. And then for two, it's like, why well, work for 850 when somebody would pay you 50 an hour? Like, I be thinking about that. And I don't knock nobody that work, but my thing is... Everything that you see can be sold. You know what I'm saying? Somebody sold the wood. Somebody got paid to build this jump. Somebody got paid to make the microphone. So everything around you is worth money. But are you going to help somebody else sell stuff or are you going to sell your own stuff? And that's that's my thing. Sell your own stuff. But you can set a price on it. Yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, kids are susceptible to different things they see on the internet. Like, like but I, I understand that too. But at the same time, I, I think back to when we were kids, like, we was watching the most like the most fucked up videos on the internet. Yeah. We were watching crazy stuff. But I think it was like I don't know, maybe it was a difference back then. Like we knew it was like entertainment or we knew like we didn't take it too serious. Like it was yeah, maybe I it's mean, like cause we weren't online as much. Like we'll go I online think, and watch it and then go back to like the real I think, world. Like that's true. But I feel like with that, um, cause I watched gangster movies, but I didn't become a gangster with my life. But something that I seen, like I watched making a band and that influenced me to be a rapper. So I think it's more about what you decide to let influence you. But the idea that everything is available from porn to how to cook crack is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you, we have kids with phones and all that. Cause yeah. they can find whatever they want. If a little kid could tell another little kid about a porn site, and then here you go. You know what I'm saying? Even if you trying to protect your kids from it, someone else not protecting their kids, and now it just spread. It's just like that. And I remember that from, like, school. A lot of stuff I got into was from what my friends was doing. You know what I'm saying? So I just try to be... I try to be... A lot of parents don't agree with, like, being a friend to your kid, but I think about everything I go through now, and I think about the fact that my mom went through similar things in her own time, but she didn't really take time to actually talk to me about nothing because she probably felt like I was too young to understand. But I talk to my kids about everything, you know what I'm saying? Because I'd rather give y'all advice than everybody else. And I want them to be comfortable talking to me because I don't want, you know, my kid to be thinking about suicide and they can't come talk to me about it because I've been that kid before, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to just do everything I can to set them up for the future because I'm not going to be here forever. Um, So it's... It's kind of having kids what kind of sets you on that path. Because I noticed, like like I said, I've, 
we know each other for like a few years, probably yeah. like four or five years. Like you wasn't in, I don't, I, don't, I never really knew you to be on some like gangster gangster music no, or I stuff ain't never like that. Been no gangster for real. But I feel like just kind of from the outside looking in, like I feel like you. I don't know if it's a new relationship, but I feel like you have this like heavy relationship with like God right now. Right. What's kind of been that, that change um, in your life? Um. Well, <laughs> my grandma had her own church right when I was like six. But you know, when you're young, you just running around eating food, not really paying attention and all that. So when I graduated high school, you know Clint Eastwood or J. Real? You know J. Real? Mm-mm. Well, Cl- me, Clint Eastwood, J. Real, Young Lost, and my brother, we all moved to Florida to. We was all gonna go to full cell and take on a different thing. Like one of us gonna do camera work, one gonna do pro tools, one gonna do live sound, then start this big company and everything. So when when we moved to Florida after high school, my people's they were Jehovah Witness, you know what I'm saying? And um I guess just from being around it, I wanted to be a part of it too. So I started going to like I guess called the Kingdom Hall and everything like that. And then um That's that's in uh, in Florida. No, I guess I guess Jehovah Witness, their church is just called Kingdom Halls, you know okay, what I'm saying? Okay, so yeah. but I did go in Florida though. All right, so um we end up coming to Virginia, we was coming down here just to support my man's mom because his mom make jazz music and she was getting it played at a festival. But we forgot to put oil in the car from here, from Florida to here. So we blew the engine and ended up getting stuck in Virginia. So I ended up trying to go to one of my homies, my best friend that was still here. We ended up going to his church, which was a Baptist church. But I had a Bible from the Kingdom Hall, John, right? So as I'm walking up and I'm walking in, they like stopped me. It's like, what are you doing with that? Like, you're not supposed to have that. That's the wrong one. So it just made me feel weird. Like, yo, this is what God, like, I don't want no part of it. You know what I'm saying? So for a good five or six years, I was against everything. Like, Jesus, I was against everything. Like, I was talking to people out of believing in it. You know what I'm saying? Which is crazy for me now when I look back at it. But I was just lost. You know what I'm saying? And then... Based off of that person, not... Like telling you that book was like it just didn't feel good because I'm thinking yeah. you know God is love this this and that and it's like I didn't at that time I didn't even know it was so many different versions of the Bible I didn't even think it was a thing I thought the Bible was the Bible you can go whatever church you want to go with it so um I started like looking into like that's when all the uh the manifesting this and I forgot what they call it but it was like mad videos on on if you think it you can bring it into your life and all this other stuff like that I started thinking i was my own god like stuff like that but i got this one guy named marcus rogers that i've been recording for like since the beginning since we started recording and stuff and um he always was secular music christian music secular music christian music you know what i'm saying so um my partner used to actually record him the most but i would say like six years into knowing him he ended up hitting me up to record his music so once i started working on his music we just became, you know, closer than what we were because it was through association at first. But being that I'm a good artist, he used to put me on his songs. And a lot of times I felt fake doing it because I'm like, I don't even believe in it. You know what I'm saying? But I took that time to address my questions with God. Like, I never came on and like, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm a this. My question was like, God, are you this? If you real, why I'm going through this? I was just talking questions like how I normally would if I was talking to a Christian person. And I think what that allowed me to do, being that I make good music, of course, I'm going to play my stuff back. But I think listening to myself over and over talk about this, allow it to to minister to my life. You know what I'm saying? And I just started just um, being around like, so I right, went from recording to like now the dude Marcus is like famous. So he'd be all over the world, like preaching different churches. So he would bring me along to film him. You know what I'm saying? And one of the things I noticed is like, you know, I travel with all type of artists. So if I'm traveling with like low ski, let's per se, like, it's always a necessity for guns, drugs, and women. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and I don't knock it, but it's like when I went out of town with Marcus and them, like, so I opposite. never. Yeah, it's like yeah. so happy. Like I'm like, why is everybody so happy? Like people just smiling at me, like people hugging for you, praying for you, and I wasn't used to it. So it just was on my mind for a long time. And then my boy just told me to get a Bible. And once I actually got the Bible and read it, I was like, okay, this is what this is about. You know what I'm saying? And then from there. I tried to find everything I could to disprove what I was feeling. You know what I'm saying? But I couldn't find nothing. I watched every debate, and I'm like, okay, he make a little bit of sense, but not enough to not convince me. You know what I'm saying? So right now I'm in a phase of where I just feel like I can't be convinced. And I don't want to try to convince other people, but we live in a world where we got to save ourselves from ourselves. And But you can't do it by yourself. So that's why I look to the advice from the Bible, because it's the most sound advice that you can get. Yeah. Even if it's better ones out there, those are some really sound advice for how to deal with what we're dealing with every day. I feel like it's um, it's just I feel like because I'm kind of going through that journey myself, or I started going through it, like I'm still going through it of like 
when you get older, like, I feel like you kind of got to find your own relationship with God. Like, it starts out as, like, you, you, you were raised by your parents. Like, I, I was raised Muslim. So, mm-hmm. but it's like, you're kind of like, by default, whatever your parents are. Mm-hmm. Then you get to this age. I know for me, it was like, okay, I got to kind of like, come to this, this conclusion on my own and figure out what it means to me. Like, right. and, and how I can really apply that in my life in a real way. Mm-hmm. So even like down when you're saying like, you, you want the songs with them and, you like don't even you feel weird because like do I even believe in it? Like, mm-hmm. I think I think that's like the most real shit you could say because like you gotta be almost like real with God too. You gotta quit that self awareness of like how much do I really believe in this? How how am I really gonna live my life in a better way? But it's just like it it kind of takes it down to like a personal level mm-hmm. and not just like this grandiose thing like yeah. believing in God. But like no, it could really be like a part of your life. That's like, what it is. I mean, from the Christian perspective. That's like what the Holy Spirit is about. When when you hear people say that, it's like it's just like the ultimate advice for and 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 through my through my research and everything and my own understanding, I come up with the term of greater good, which means like I feel like every situation is a moment where you can use advice from God. You know what I'm saying? So if you was to get upset and start cussing me out right now. What would be my response? You know what I'm saying? And how I respond is going to affect the next move. You know what I'm saying? I could get mad and fuss back at you, but that's just throwing fire on fire. Like, so I feel like when it comes to like God, he don't, he, he always wants you to put the fire out because whatever decision you make is going to cause another type of reaction. So you say you, I'm like, man, you, and then we're going to be doing that back and forth. But if you call me and I'm like, bro, it's cool. I love you. You know what I mean? It's cool. If I approach it different than me and your relationship, it probably won't fall off. It probably allows us to sit down and talk about our problems and everything like that. So I just try to apply it in every way I can. And now, you know, for a long time, like what it was about the Bible to me was making me realize that I'm not as good as I thought I was. I thought because I'm not selling drugs to people, because I'm not robbing people, that I'm a good person. But the Bible teaches you that me lying and you murdering is come from the same unpure heart. So it's like, okay, I'm no different than this person. And it makes me have to humble myself at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So I look back at every situation, small or big, all the relationships. And I was just like, what would have happened if I would have did what God wanted me to do in those situations? And I feel like, you know, depression and all, a lot of that stuff wouldn't have been as heavy as it is right now. And this was all of just not putting enough oil in the car. That's how it started. Like, <laughs> you wouldn't even probably went to that. To that yeah. Church. Yeah. <laughs> I don't eat. Like, yeah. Nah, I love that, bro. I see, you know, you got, see, you got your, like, your kids, like, reading uh, Proverbs yeah. on Instagram and stuff. Um, Hell yeah. But that's one of the things my parents didn't do. My grandma, they didn't force it. And I'm not trying to force it either, but I just need them to understand, like, when I was little, well, I don't know. It's it's kind of always been, you know, the problem with people is we know we do wrong, but if you don't have no one to hold you accountable, it ain't going to mean nothing. You know what I mean? You could just cheat on your girl and it, it ain't going to mean nothing to you because you can't, what's she going to do? Break up with you? That's not a punishment. You know what I'm saying? But if if I got to deal with this unpure heart and I know I might go to hell one day, that's a reason to reconsider what I'm doing. And it could be called a scare tactic, but... I look at fear, like if you was drunk, my fear for you dying would say, bro, don't get in the car and drive home. So fear is not a bad thing. Fear is meant for boundaries. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's like it's just consequence. It's a consequence. Yeah. So it's like it's in like, life, there's consequences. Without God, who going, what, I'm going to go to jail? That's like the most consequence you can get. You know what I mean? It's from from doing certain things. So it's like with him, if 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 I fuss at my wife, we get mad and I call her a B. When it's time to talk to him, he going to let me know. Like, you should not have did that. You know that's wrong. You know I don't approve of that. So it makes me want to be better. Like, in every area of my life, even when I'm fathering my kids, it's like it, it calms me down. It's like, how you... Can you be so mad at them when you know God not mad at you when you did the same thing? Like so, it's like it, it's like a self check system to me, and it work out well for anyone who want to be better. If you don't, you are gonna Jesus ain't real. You are gonna say all type of stuff to make you not want to have to look at the fact that you a bad person too. We all bad people with good intentions. Yeah, you touched on um your parents being Jehovah's Witness coming up. Not my parents, my friends' parents. My, parents. my grandma was she Christian, Christian. Oh, okay, okay. My um, mom, they you know they everybody believe in God, but don't nobody. It's a difference in believing in God and then showing the world you believe in God. Because that's the only way I can convince you. Like, if you knew I was a drug dealer and I was a murderer out here and then you see me out here really changing my life, you're going to wonder what that is. So I have to show transformation, like, and not be afraid. So a lot of people keep God to they so. Oh, it's, like, it's like almost they're trying to erase God from the world. I mean, is it just me? Didn't they take um, In God We Trust out of the Pledge of Allegiance? 
My truck did it. I don't hear even something like that? know, but you can't even yeah. find a you can't even find a cross in Target. Really? But you can find like like shirts with like tarot cards and all that stuff on it. So they got, I, they, they got it on the money still though. And, and God, I believe and God we it, trust. I believe like I I like it's just it's no coincidence. It's like I see Jesus, the name of Jesus, and it's that whole conversation when they get to what's the real Jesus? Is he black? Is he white? He's like I pitch into the information, bro, because. That's what's transforming people. It's not the fact that he was a white man, Chinese man, black man, whatever the case may be. His legacy alone and what he taught is what the transformation is. So I don't I don't get into all that. For a long time, I didn't want to believe because I didn't want to believe nobody walked on water. But now when I humble myself, my thing is how much more of a miracle do I need to ask for when I'm sitting here live with all these organs in me pumping blood, doing this, cells, fighting cells. I got sperm that can make... Kids, I don't need no more miracles. You know what I'm saying? We Damn. are the miracle already. Like you stand outside. This is a picture of the earth right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that joke is just sitting there, like in real time. Like, so I don't need no more miracles. The moon and the sun, everything moving, clockwork, everything working on time to work. I don't question miracles no more. So if he can do all that, he can make somebody walk on water if he got proof of point. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. Cause when you start questioning miracles, of course, well, I ain't never seen nobody walk on water, so I ain't gonna believe it. But you ain't somebody make the earth either, but it's here and we living on it. We don't even know what we are. We don't even know how we got here for real. Like nope. it's like that's part of I feel like that's part of the fun part of life, the mystery. Mm-hmm. Trying to like, you know, I don't know. We might we may, uh, we may never figure it out. Um I don't even think the goal is to figure it out because it's too in depth. Only thing I know is we get like a hundred years. So it's like, what do you want to be remembered by? Like you think it's the dude who made the Apple phone. His, I don't, when, are we ever gonna get another phone to compete with Android and Apple? So what he did with his life is legendary, like, and that's what I want. Whether it's through music or whether it's through my kids, I want my time here to be remembered through other things, not necessarily me. You know what I'm saying? Just what I did, like, and what I meant to the world. Like, Even if I save good. one life, bro, like that's yeah. that's fulfilling to me. Bro, I've been watching. I seen. I was watching this um, dude talk. I forgot his name. It's, I want to say it's Bruce. Maybe Bruce Lipton, something like that. Mm-hmm. But he was talking about just like evolution and stuff. And um, he was like, uh, we get to a point where as a species, like, okay, the human, we kind of evolved to our final form already. Like, this is pretty much what we're going to be like, whatever. He said, but evolution is when um, species start coming together. So he was like, in the beginning, it was like a cell, whatever, right? It started, we all started as a cell, whatever it was, and they started duplicating. So the evolution is a bunch of those cells getting together and like making something new. So right now we're made out of like things that like some trillion cells make up you. Like mm-hmm. you're not even, you're not like one solid thing. You're like a trillions of cells that come right. together and, and make up a person. So he was like the next level of evolution <laughs> is hum- uh, mankind coming together to create this new thing called humanity, which is all of us working together like as one. And um, he's like, that's the next level of evolution. Um, Which would be awesome Yeah like I don't know where I was going with that uh, I don't know But it's like <laughs> But it's just like it all the time I do it all the time But yeah it's like uh, it's, just, it's just one of the things Like uh, that's the next step He was like saying That's the next step of evolution um, I thought we are bouncing around a little bit Okay so you coming up um, I'll ask you too When it kind of When did just being creative Kind of start for you I mean I always Been the one to sit in class And draw And all that I used to Draw Um my family sing, so I would always, as a little boy, sing. You know what I'm saying? They didn't make music, but they were singers, like, in church and all that stuff. And then, um, yeah, I mean, when Making the Band came out, bro, that was it for me. Me and my homies, we instantly started battling each other. And then, Who was that? Was that Diddy that ran that? Yeah. yeah. And then it was that. And then um, uh, when Fruit Loose came out, we just started making beats and all that. So this, this is high school? Yeah. So it was making beats first. I mean, it was battle rapping first, yeah. and then making beats, and then recording on the computer at my man's crib. Did, did that kind of, how was that at the time coming up, just doing multiple things? Because I feel like a lot of people kind of get stuck on just doing one thing, or I mean, is I it hard to? Nah, I don't, because I'm a type of person, like, if I can search it and learn it, I'm going to do it, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of the stuff, like, making the beats, I wasn't a producer when I was, we was doing it. We just literally found a new program that you can click gray dots and make beats, you know what I'm saying? So we just started making any type of corny beat, but the seriousness for producing came into play when um when I realized you got to pay for it. Like, I'm like, I can't, even my first, when I first started, we, we used to record on a little cheap headphone piece on like the, 
the like the video game headset. Yeah, like and, and then he got you know the cheap program where you can just record one take. So we used to make all the songs straight through, like no punches, no doubles, no ad libs, like. And then when we finally got to a big studio, which was the lab, I don't know if you heard of the lab. That's Daddy and them pops. That was their studio uptown. I know Daddy. I didn't know his dad had a yeah. Um, it was DJ Silk and um, and um and Joe Tracks. But yeah, they was they like legendary for real. And they um, but I went to their studio for the first time, bro, and I had to pay for another hour to come do some ad libs. I said, oh nah, I gotta get get my own studio. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that also came from with my homeboy. The computer we worked on was at his house. So it's like, when you go over there, if I was to make a fire beat, he'd be like, no, let me get on the computer. So I was like, I can't get better until I get my own stuff. So I just invested in my own stuff. How long do you think you were creating uh, from when you started to that point when you like left Taco Bell and was like, I'm just going to do this full time? Uh, Probably like, some from like, because I wasn't working at Taco Bell in ninth grade, of course. So I would say once I, once I, Came back from Florida. I graduated, went out there for like a year and a half. Came back. Um, what was the point of the question again? I was saying, how long were you kind of doing it before you? Oh, probably like a year full time. Because like I said, at first we started performing and people asked who was recording the music. So we that's when I started dealing with like Tuan Gotti, Mister Five Fourteen. It was just a small few people, not even people from uptown. It was actually, people from downtown first. And um, we just start recording them, and the more we recorded them, the more they perform their music, the more people who were recording that, because we was doing the chopping and all that stuff. And um, so I'll just say like a year into working at Taco Bell and making music is when I decided to actually quit that jump. Did you know Coop back in the day? Fairly, not all the way, but he was, I knew him through messing with Tom Gotti. I'm about to say, yeah, because he was up here recently telling me that um, he was making music with him and like... Yeah, Before I knew of like him then, but we ain't really having a relationship for real. Yeah, I've been talking to him. I don't know if he's seen that we had like a combo on live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny shit, but yeah. He, he, he I been love Coop, in. though, man. You said what? I love Coop. Coop? Yeah. Yeah, he hard, man. He hard. Um, so you get back from Florida, you leave Taco Bell, you're doing it full time. I'm sure it's been, I'm sure it's like being an entrepreneur is like shaky. You might go one month, make a lot of money, then you might not make no money, or you might. Um, what are some kind of some challenges you think that you face just just running your own business and having to be the one that, like to motivate yourself to do it? I mean, it? my my main challenge even to this day is me and the kind heart that I have. Like in hindsight, I can look back and say I did allow a lot of people to run over me, whether it's price or going over time, because I don't like confrontation. And I, and I realized a long time ago when you try to have a straightforward conversation with somebody, like a real talk, it don't never go that way. It's always the beginning of a different situation because I spoke the truth about how I felt about something. So a lot of times I would just let stuff slide. Like, you know what I'm saying? And um even like in Beachmont, I used to have fifteen people standing outside my house all the time. And I never was man enough to stand up and say, Yo, y'all y'all got to go. This was before yeah. you had the studio in Norfolk, like up the stairs? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. This is like my first studio when we had it in Beachmont. But um just that for real and then to as far as you saying, like, there's moments where you have, you know, customers and you don't. I dealt with that, too, but the fix for that was to just get more clientele. Because I realized, like, and this is a part of why I never was able to get cocky with it. Like, I can be cocky, but I don't do it, like, publicly and I don't do it to people. Because I could have, you know, be on this high horse and say, well, I make all y'all sound good. But if y'all don't come to me, I, I can't pay my bills. So I just always kept myself humble like that. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate anybody who do business with me because y'all and y'all put food in my kids' mouth. When y'all can go to any studio y'all want to. Granted, I'm good, but that don't mean you have to come spend the money with me. Yeah, I think people do business different. I always been, I always, like, I thought I learned that from my dad. Always, always be honest, do good business. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because it's all word of mouth. If you if I come to you and you, and I'm fucking about to record a song with you and you just treat me like shit while recording and you being a dickhead whatever I'm gonna probably go tell somebody they go tell somebody and it's gonna get nobody's gonna want to work with you no more so mm-hmm. it's like I think people I try to see the best in people and I, I feel like mo- the majority of people are good but sometimes it's about how you approach them or like mm-hmm. even like you were talking about earlier like even if I say something to you your response can kind of dictate how we move forward from that yeah. so it's like um. I definitely agree with that. Um, what about Coach of VA? How yeah. how'd that come about? That was just an accident for real, for real. As a cameraman, I always been shooting videos and I always been the vlogging type. So I always kept footage, but 
when you think about a music video, when you shoot it, only thing you go and edit is what you need. What do you mean? Like, if all the the bloopers don't make it in the video, right? Okay. So you get what's most important from it. You edit the video and you put it out and you kind of sit the footage off to the side. Oh, so you got like all this extra footage. Yeah. So what happened was one day I was just looking at, I, I, I looked at a, a, a actual performance shot without the music sync with it. And I'm like, yo, this is interesting. You know what I'm saying? Just the reality of it was mad interesting. So the idea started developing to, because one of the things that's, and it's not a bad thing, but I've always been a person who, who put Virginia before me. So my thing is, because that idea of Coach VA could have just been mine. But I'm like, how? what can I do to add to Virginia? So when I look at what we were doing at the time to promote music, all you had was maybe an Instagram post or two, then you got the CD cover, and then you got the video. But I'm like, that don't tell our supporters who we are. You know what I'm saying? But if if... I feel like if, like right now, these cameras is recording us in real time. So when you play this back, this is what really happened. Like, this is how we really talk. This is how I really move. It's not all cut up and everything. So when you look at raw footage, that's like the closest you can get to how natural the person really is. Like, you get to see how goofy people is. You get to see how, how people eat. You get to see what they eat. You get to see they shoes of choice. So my thing was just to keep the camera on at all times and then create, like, this... It's supposed to be like a forever lasting documentary. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I work with so many people. So it's my life and their life at the same time. And then I took the the team mom spin where you put two stories in one. Like, mm, what they I got. Remember. Like, team mom is always. It's I, remember, not, I remember the show. They, actually, they were out here. I think they did an episode. Oh, for at real? Virginia Beach. So, like, area, the yeah. idea would be if I, if, if I was still doing it, which I should be, but I'm only one man, it's kind of hard to manage all that. But I would come be with you for a day. Whatever you're doing, I don't care what you're doing, you could be going to work, come and do a podcast, I'm going to follow you. Then if y'all didn't know each other, let's say he had a mon lawn company, I would follow him around for the day. And then in the episode, I put both of y'all together, like half, half story, half story. Will we meet or it's just like we never meet? It's just like- yeah, I never got to that idea to have people meet which would have yeah. been good but my thing is in Virginia we don't support each other so this was my way of forcing it I could take two artists who don't like each other but got a common situation with me and put both of y'all on one episode so now people all your people who don't like them get to see this person and hopefully like this person for who they are even though like the beef part wasn't really part of the idea but it's just the idea of making people cross promote each other because it's, it's somebody right now who watch you that probably don't share your stuff and vice versa but if i put y'all both on the same episode when they come to getting views it's your fan base his fan base and then people get to see what you do too that's kind of that's kind of feel about the show too like just having a place where all the artists can be on the same platform. It mm-hmm. kind of shows. I feel like it shows the outside world. Kind of gives them the perspective that like we're all on one page when it comes to like our scene and yeah. like trying and that, to. And that was part of the goal too. I wanted um because the form the format for it was so easy. Like you know with with Adobe you can make templates. You know what I'm saying. You can have the tent already set. You can have the words already set. So my thing was to try to get different cameramen that throw away footage. To just let me get it, but it was just so hard to try to bring everybody together because I wanted Coach VA to be the CNN of Virginia, and then anybody who was willing to help me build the culture, like it's the CNN of Virginia. You know, I remember just saying like, you know, like a hub for yeah, whatever. No, yeah, that's like, hard. Y'all yeah, that's can hard. take whatever y'all want. Like even with y'all, if it was y'all, y'all podcast clips would be on it too. Because I just wanted. I feel like when. When you let, like, you think about Virginia, one of the things I hate the most is when we get misrepresented. So like. A person that's as good as me, I never could afford to go on World Star. But a person who's not that good could. But when it's on the world, it's in the air for people to see Virginia. It's like a misrepresentation. Not like you know, no diss to anybody who, who it was. But if the right artist from Virginia, like Troy Blake, let's say if his song was to be on World Star, it's like oh snap, Virginia sound crazy. Like so, I just always been trying to figure out what could I do to to bring Virginia up more because I feel like we have it. I don't feel like we got to go out of town to get it and everything like that. We have it right here. Yeah, I think what like what. Whatever type of music you're looking for or whatever art, like somebody's making that type of shit in the city. And mm-hmm. then we're doing like different stuff too. Um, so you kind of documenting like VA culture with culture yeah. VA. Um, yeah, I feel like you've been doing it for long enough to kind of see like, it's like almost we've seen like different eras of underground people in Virginia. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like throughout I the years. I wish I could have kept it going though. But the idea of- What? Uh, culture VA? Yeah. Like I still got the footage, but- 
I can't do all the sessions and edit all the videos all the time. So it's like something would always have to go. And I wish it wouldn't have been Coach VA because when I first did it, I'm not going to say it blew up, but it kind of blew up a little bit. And I didn't even anticipate this part. But we was at a uh, like a club or something. Cartel had a performance. And um, I'm just outside filming the boys as we walking out and all that. But the, when I dropped the first episode, I was getting calls like, yo, you got to take that down. I'm in, the, I'm in the back with a girl I ain't supposed to be oh, with. Wow. Like, <laughs> it started just getting crazy. So it was like the hype from it was like good. and But, you know, with anything, you got to keep it up. So it was like... I fell off with it, and then a year came back around. It's like, I feel like a great idea is the one that don't leave your mind. Even if you're not thinking about it for five months and it come back, Coach V8 mm. always come back. So I done try rebranding it, like, with the bird. But every time I get into the act of trying to keep it up, it's like, I can't do it. Like, I don't, I'm not structured enough to say, all right, every Wednesday at 6, we dropping a new episode. Because ain't you, no telling. Have you tried to, like, kind of... <laughs> Build a team with it, get an editor or Bro, people to help you out with it? My thing with building a team is I think I did it wrong by selecting my friends like, and not going to find people who about their business. Not saying my friends wasn't, but for me as a person, I'll record for 24 hours straight, 36 if I had to. So if, if I can't get that energy from you, like... It, it it don't go right. I hate feeling. I don't want to babysit adults. Like I need people who going like you. You do what you do, bro. You one twenty nine. Then you know what I'm saying. I don't know how how dedicated bro is, but you can have someone around you who's not as dedicated. He might be on episode forty, sitting next to you. I'm just saying like, I need the same type of grind I got for it to be a team. But I never went yeah. to like to get no interns or nothing. And people have been telling me stuff, but it's just something I ain't never did. Yeah, it can be hard, I think. Um, finding people that have y'all visions align. You know, is somebody here? Oh, all right. Um, like, yeah, like finding people that y'all visions align, y'all work ethics align. Um, you know, I mean, we, you know, this started out with the crew. This show yeah. started out with the crew. You know what I'm saying? And over time, people do their thing. People aren't as dedicated or whatever. Um, yeah. But I think ultimately you need people. You can't do it by yourself. Right, really, and then to make something great, you really need people. So it's like I've been kind of just learning that too. Just kind of have that trust in people, mm. find people you can trust, and um, collaborate. One you know of the saying? things I realized though is most of the people that you would want to be in business with, like you, like me and you, got similar hustles. So if we was in the project together. We of course we were further and more, but the people who really bout their stuff already got their own stuff going on. Like me and G White should have been had a studio together. We got the same hustle, same grind, but. He got his own thing going on. I got my own thing going on. So am I going to leave mine? Is he going to leave his? And most of the time, yeah. it's like, I'm going to just stay doing what I'm doing. Even though we mutually friends, but a studio with me and him in it together would be ideal for Virginia. But right now, he done built his own thing on his own. So I don't expect him to leave his thing. And I expect the same respect from me. Yeah. So now we got to pretty much deal with everybody else who not grinding like we were. like Or like we should. But me and him together got grind. We we talking about Virginia too. Um, just being somebody that's kind of been doing it around here for for a while. Um, any no, any differences you notice now? Kind of positive or negative stuff that the, how the scene off. has changed since since uh, I feel like the scene for real. I don't. I stopped paying attention because my whole career I always had like a hidden beef with Virginia because I never wanted them. I never stood up and said, yo, I need y'all to hold me up as a trophy for Virginia. But I felt like everything I did deserved that. You know what I'm saying? Like, And it's just me and my, my own pride, in which I don't carry on to it no more. But at the time, it was just like, bro, I'm doing everything for everybody. I'm writing this. I'm writing that. I'm making the cover. I shot the video. I did. So it's like a lot of times, like, like even with this podcast, like I thank God that you hit me up because you would think everybody would want to talk to me because I it's like y'all y'all can't even feel nobody that I didn't pretty much work with like it's almost impossible except for the new younger people but for all these years everybody who's doing something I am the main engine for it so it's like I never wanted to be cocky and say yeah y'all need to push put me on first but at the same time I held like a little gripe or grudge with it because I felt like it should have been given. Like I didn't get calls for no openings for future or nothing like that. The only way I got them things is my team paid for it and put it together. So I feel like it was a lack of respect I didn't get from Virginia. But I always see people supporting everybody else that I do the work with. They just don't come to the source or nothing. So it always bothered me for a real long time. Why why do you think that is? Cuz I'm 
I can say it now, but I'm because I am the competition. I'm not the one at open mic that's going to sound like everyone else. I'm the one that's going to sound like up here and everybody else sound like that. And it's been like that for years. Oh, that reminds me too. What I was talking about to do earlier, uh, that was talking about like the <laughs> evolution of humans. Mm. That's where I was going to go with that. He was talking about competition and he was like, they took competition out of context. Like the original, I, I didn't even look it up yet. Hopefully this it yeah, was I true. See that video. But he was like, uh, the original meaning of competition isn't, there isn't a winner or a loser. Competition was created for collaboration. So everybody gets better. Mm-hmm. The reason me and you are in competition, that's what friendly competition, like friendly competition, that's the actual meaning of competition. It's it's so we both push each other to get, so we so at the end we're both better. As best but as the way we be. look at competition now is like one person got to win, one person got to lose. And I don't really think it's, it's that way, especially like in arts now. Like, bro, it's enough uh, money for everybody out here. Yeah. And the only way our scene, I, I say that all the time, the only way our scene is going to pop if we have a lot of people popping out here. Mm-hmm. The only way we have a real scene is if we have multiple people, multiple platforms that are like doing their thing at the same time. The crazy thing is about Virginia is, um, I don't know if you know who Big Juice is. Mm, I don't think so. But Big Juice, ACM Juice, he... uh. He did some collabs with some people from Detroit, like the main people, um, like Giovanni and all them, Payroll and all that. And with them, they were like they they act just like us, bro. Like you know how you can go to the A and you can know he act like he from Atlanta or he act like he from this. I know how Norfolk people act. People from Detroit act just how we act, like to the point. Hey, if, what if, way? If, like what, just the way it is, like yeah. like the way it feel, like. I, I don't know. To me, this is just me and how I how I be. I know when somebody, if I'm out of town and I know I know somebody from Virginia, without them even having to say it, or even if whether it's just the accent or whatever, because in Detroit they got an accent. But most of when I go out of town, I feel like I'm around different people. Like if I'm in LA, I feel like I feel it. In Detroit, I felt like I was at home. Okay. And I don't know if it's because subconsciously they shared the same story we shared, where it's like. We got to leave our city to get on. You know what I'm saying? But listening to them, like, it, this was at a time where everything kind of just starts taking off of them. So they weren't even doing, like, the open mic shows and the panels and all that. Everything fell into their lap like this. Like, and he said what it was for them was they always looked outside of the city to support this Atlanta sound, to support this. Oh, we got to sound like this. We got to sound like that. But he was like, once they realized people weren't rocking with them, Everybody in the city became fans of everybody in the city music, and they just rep their own stuff. And that made so everybody else they, be fans. Of yeah, it. so yeah. that's what we have to do here is become fans of it. Like, but we can't do that because my homie just dropped the tape, so I'm not about to share Rick Junk. And you know what I mean? It'd be like that. And I expect, I get it because you can't share hundred people music on your thing. But the dude Bink has said something in Clubhouse one time. He said we don't have to like each other, but we don't have to publicly diss each other. That's where we go wrong at. I can not like your music all I want, but I'm not. I don't need to be up under the comments talking about one of my relatives from Virginia and how good his mixtape is. Not you get what I'm saying. I could just keep that to myself. If I'm gonna say something, say something that's gonna help that person. Yeah, I think I think hyping each other up is a key key to it. Hyping each other up so much that the rest of the world is like, yo, we gotta see what the hype is about. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and we spend the money. We just need to circulate it here. We just spend it everywhere else. Like Virginia been had it, bro, and that's why. For a long time, I, I always was trying to figure out what could I do. Like, I, I, I didn't, but I just sat down and came up with so many plans on how this thing could work for Virginia. I had like this, I forgot what I called it, but it was just like a situation where you get 10 artists, we make one mixtape, everybody put up $50, get the CDs, everybody go sell it, bring it back to the table. I had different groups of that, so it'd be 10 people here, 10 people here, 10 people there, but it always go wrong when the egos come into play and then make me give mm. up on it. Uh, egos, I, I, don't, I never uh, understood, like, I'm the one that should have the ego. Like, out of everybody, it should be me, but I don't, because i just never been that way. For me, bro, it's... I'm still working on my ego, too, but I feel like the more success I get, the more I realize how much further I have to go, so mm-hmm. that humbles me. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, um, even like we were talking about earlier, like, how I talk to people or how I interact with people, like, I like doing good business. Like, if I do or say something, like, I... That I regret. I'll think about that shit. Will be on my heart. Like I'll really think about that shit for days. Like damn, I shouldn't have said that. I should have did that. I should have moved differently. Like, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, but the relationship with God, when I get like that, that don't have me calling people. Like I call people I fell out with for no reason. Like bro, I just want to apologize to you because it won't all you. It was me. Yeah. And hopefully we can fix this thing and move forward from it. Like just random people that I ain't talked to in six years, bro. Because I was just, just feeling like a baby for real. Like when I. 
when I actually understood that God was real, I felt like a baby. Like, like you're like, reborn. Yeah, shit. like yeah. for real. And it, and it allowed me to appreciate it. Bro, I remember one day I was sitting downstairs. Because what happens is I always get that thought like, yo, God, this ain't real. Like, Jesus ain't real. Like, I always get it. You know what I'm saying? But when I get that thought, I ask him to show me. And every time I ask, he show me for real, for real. Like, in, in a way that I never would have thought it. You know what I'm saying? And um, I remember one night I was downstairs on the computer. And this is when I was straddling the fence. Like, this is before I actually got baptized. And I was uh just looking out the window. And I'm like, yo, that joint would be a fire painting. But it dawned on me that that's not a painting, bro. That's like real clouds. That's a real blue sky. It's even better than the painting. That's yeah. That's real trees. That's real birds out here singing. It's real stars. Like all this stuff, and it's it's just I had to start crying because I'm like, yo, you've been you a fool. Like you a fool to think that you are God when you can't produce none of this stuff outside. So I have to humble myself. Like not calling myself a God isn't a diss to myself. It's just like, yo, you got to know your role in this society. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to know your role. Like and a relationship with God allowed me to humbly accept my role in my life. Like as a father, as an artist, as everything. Like because I mean, why, 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 why I feel like you're just as equal to someone who did all of this when you can't even get your day to day life right? You know what I'm saying? For me. I get it. It's funny you say too, uh, like looking at out the window like it was a painting. Like recently I was thinking about uh like I was thinking about movies kinda in that way. Like we look at movies like, oh, this is this real interesting movie. Like we like coming up, I feel like when I was younger, I used to think movies are more interesting in real life. Then I had a switch, like, yo, no wait. Movies are just like a per- small percentage of mm-hmm. how interesting and how cool like the story of life is. Mm-hmm. So I'm starting to look at life like a movie. It's like like the the storyline, like, you know, it's a fucking um it's like in a movie, you go through problems, you figure it out. It's like character development. Mm-hmm. It's like, so I'm looking at my life like that, kind of like I'm in this movie, like, and I'm just like figuring and it out. And when, then when you actually embrace the beauty of creation itself, from us to birds to dogs, what, I don't hate life no more. I live my life hating life, like depressed, like all the time, like crying, like people don't know, like. I am a crier, like, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Like, people can hear it in my music, but it'd be different to see me in action doing it. But I just always didn't, I always felt like I didn't belong here because we live in a world now where you could tell someone that they're being too nice. Like, that sounds crazy. Like, I've been hearing it my whole life, but you just too nice. You too nice. I'm like, bro, what is wrong with being too nice? Like, why are y'all making me feel like something wrong with me because I'm too nice? Like, when people, everyone should be being too nice to each other. Yeah, kind of, if, if people are mean to you and you allow that to make you a mean person, that's kind of, uh, they, they won. I, yeah, my, and my, one, one of my OGs had told me, too, he was like, he was like, I, you know, I know you go through stuff. I know you don't like being ran over, but he was like, you got to think about balance. Like, if you change who you are, you're going to shift the balance of the world. So don't let nobody change who you are. Like, just if you if you got a kind heart, he said you keep that. You know what I'm saying? Because we need that just like we need people who are mean. You know what I'm saying? You kind of need a little bit of everything for everything to stay balanced out. So I just accept my role. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, I'll kind of some music shit. I was gonna ask you too. Uh, how did uh, the Ricky Miyagi trilogy start? What's the idea behind always, the damn karate? And, I and all always, that? I always, <laughs> uh, not always, but for a long time, like it started with this series called Mister Rogers' Neighborhood, where I would say like, like oh, Mister Rogers. Like the actual the white guy, Mister Rogers. Rogers. But did you have a you had a series? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I, I did, but it was gonna be a series. But that was the start of using characters to, uh, you know, dress up who, what I am. Like I, I did a bad Santa tape where I wore my elf one time. I might be Santa Claus. So it's like I was just always taking stuff from my childhood that I like and then using a spin on it. But when you think about Mr. Miyagi, like the actual Chinese dude. If you ever watched the movie, everything he say out of his mouth is, is that a, the one from Karate Kid? Yeah. Okay, okay. So everything he say out of his mouth wax is on, a jewel. Wax off, yeah. Like, okay, it's yeah. a jewel. You know what I'm saying? It's like everything he say is full of wisdom. And he's a karate master too. So I feel like with my music and how good I rap, I I try to rap and drop jewels all the time. So it's just like the ultimate like sensei, the ultimate like, you know, karate master type of warrior, but in my own translation. Master of my craft. Yeah, I think that the third the third one came out. The third album came out. I want to say twenty twenty one, right? Yeah. Are you gonna you plan on keep like keep going with those? Um. Well, the next project I'm dropping is was just number four, but it's called Ricky Miyagi for Christ. So it's like kind of cool. I fuck with it. I fuck <laughs> yeah, with it's kind of cool for for. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um. What else? Okay. So you said you were going on kind of. What's his name? Marcus. The dude you're going with. Marcus Rogers. Yeah. Yeah. Is he like going on tours with him and stuff? I mean, he ain't really torn because, bro, like a black sheep for real, for real. Because like we mean, but like kind of like so because undiscovered kind of. With one thing I realized about the Christian community, it's the same thing as the secular world. Like not like the guns and all that, but the differences. You know what I'm saying? How over here everybody clicked up. It's the same thing over here. And then you know you got religion wise, it's different denominations and all this. So it's still separate over there. But you know, like when to be a Christian means to preach the true word of God. So when it comes to like homosexuality and all that stuff, like if the Bible says it's wrong, it's nothing wrong with me saying it's wrong. But if I'm gonna get out here and stick my neck out here and let y'all know that God says it's not okay, it kind of makes it kind of you you become like the black sheep because a lot of people uh, you see a lot of churches supporting like gay stuff and all that you know what I mean and I'm not against neither but I do believe men and women were made for each other you know what I'm saying but he the type of person that if he see you not being godly like he gonna call it out you know what I'm saying and um so it's a lot of situations where like we call it like Hollywood Christianity where it's like like you wouldn't expect weed smoking and alcohol and all that to be backstage at a Christian event. You know what I'm saying? So that's like people not living right. So his thing is he just want to represent the body of Christ the, the best way that he can. So And he's the one that's going to speak out. So a lot of people that's like, the, you know, how we, we got gatekeepers here in Virginia too. So the gatekeepers of the Christian community, they don't, they're not calling Marcus for no award the, show or no gate, event. I've never heard nobody say that the gatekeeper. Because he going to be the community. one in the back like, yo, y'all know y'all not supposed to be doing this. You need to put that blunt out. He that type of person, you know what I'm saying? So I think they just, everything is about money, even in Christianity for real, in some situations. like So a lot of stuff they do, they won't stand out and speak against nothing in the world that's wrong. And that's what we call to do. Like I'm supposed to tell my homies that, yo, that's not right. You shouldn't be doing it. And it's only out of love because I love you. It's not because I'm trying to make you feel better or I get it, man. Yeah, I really, I really try not to like judge people for anything. Mm. Kind of like you know, people can live their life how they want to. Like, I feel like as long as you treat people well, trying to see, but bring that, that kindness to the world. See, like, that's, who am I to tell somebody how to? You know what I'm saying? Literally, but like, that's like I get exactly what you're saying. But if I can be kind to you and still not want to see you self destruct, like when you think about like even just like. We'll talk to each other about porn not mattering, but the deeper issue is it does. Like, it, especially no, people is really addicted to porn. That's right. what I'm saying. And that junk, nobody takes account of how that can affect the marriage, how it f- affects you inside, and all these different type of things. So we can be kind all day, but we still got to tell the truth. I'm not about to sit here and watch you smoke crack and then just be kind and like, what well, is your life? You, you, you. Do what you want. Like I'm like, nah, bro. Like maybe you should stop because this. And you know, I'm gonna give you good advice. Like, so it's, I, I take love over kindness because if I love you, like I said, I would tell you not to drive home drunk because I love you, not because I want to control you. I just don't want to see you tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want to yeah. call you tomorrow. Like I don't want to hear about you getting in an accident because I let you drive home drunk because I'm being kind and it's your life. You get what I'm saying? I get it. Um, yeah. See, I, and I think even past that, I feel like. Uh, like I think you should be able to say that, and that should be okay. Like everybody can have their own beliefs about mm-hmm. their their life, how they want to raise their kids, how they want to move. Like, but you know now it's like I kind of feel like we're in a culture now where it's like if if you don't agree with somebody, like you gotta silence them, you gotta censor them. Like you don't even oh, yeah. you don't even want to hear it now. And then it's yeah. like people just like demonize the other side. That's yeah. that's scary to me. Like I don't really you know what I'm saying. I think everybody should be able to say what they believe. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's that's America. I look at the world you know now, and it, it just like I said, it just made me want to get right with God. Cause yeah, some of the stuff is crazy, bro. Like, and then to think that you can't say something that's true, I could see if like somebody like Ye was to get up there and be lying. You know what I'm saying? Like blatantly lying, making us stuff. But he should be able to, at the minimum, say the bro, truth. Bro, you seen the shit with his trainer? Nah, not all the way, bro. You seen that? Talking about the I text messages? Yeah, yeah. Nah, his trainer, which I didn't even do. I got to look more into it. But somebody just posted some shit on Twitter earlier <laughs> talking about their trainer is part of like some. Uh, his trainer was part of some like psychology like experiment, some weird shit. Um, but now his trainer was like, he said some to him, and then his trainer was like, basically like, if he don't listen, I'm a get you hospitalized again. And he said, literally said, I'm gonna have him drug the crap out of you. And he was like, you won't see your kids or some, cra- like some crazy shit like that, bro. And it literally reminded me of the, um, you watch Black Mirror? Nope. 
It's I've a, seen him saying that, but I ain't never seen it for, though. It's a it's an episode of Black Mirror with Miley Cyrus, and that shit is literally just like that. It's somebody, it's a manager of an artist that's trying to control that artist, <laughs> m- make them do and like make type of music that they don't really want to make, and they're using drugs to do it, keeping them in this like kind of yeah bro. down it's state evil, bro. where you can't even like speak up for yourself, and it's like I think kind of um. So you, you been tapping into what's going on with Kanye? Oh yeah, I'm I'm a Kanye fan. I never yeah, thought Ye was too. crazy. So bro, I'm, you I'm see, you seen his podcast with Lex Friedman? Yeah, I watched every last one of them. <laughs> bro, I feel like I watched I've watched a few of them that he did on his last run, and I think the one with Lex was like the most interesting one. Like yeah, I feel like Lex like the, connected it was with him a on a different way. Tone. Yeah, he yeah. won't. Most like bro, you, I mean he he not lying. You know what I'm saying? Like even when you watch people like Piers Morgan and him, I watched that interview too. I watched some of that. I ain't watched. I noticed yeah. Piers Morgan tone is different with different people. Word. When he interviewed with Jordan Peterson, he was way more less like antagonizing, like but like Yay and like Andrew Tate, he like antagonized them like to the point you trying to make me agree with what you think and all that. So with the dude Lex, he was it was more like and he was Jewish too. Yeah, it's more like a common ground, you know what I'm saying? But now nah, when 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 Kanye told him I don't trust you, bro got hurt. <laughs> Probably bro was hurt. Now he he brought it back he had he brought it back at the end. He was like, bro, I'm gonna be honest like that. He was like, nobody ever told me that they didn't trust me like that. He was like, I'm gonna be honest, like that hurt. And like, <laughs> I, I feel like I seen a different side of Kanye in that too. Like, it was, it was interesting. It was interesting. Yeah, definitely. I feel like that interview was an interview where I would say God showed up in him. Cause even when people like he shouldn't apologize, it's like that's not what God would want you to do. Like, if you offend somebody, even if you feel like you're right, maybe you should have said it different. Where you, cause if you offend somebody, you should apologize at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Not be this. Bo, I'm gonna stand on what I say. It's like, bro, somebody could say something to hurt your daughter feelings and have the same energy. Like, I'm just gonna stand on what I said. Effort, you know what I'm saying? But it's sincere and nice to apologize when you hurt somebody, bro. And that's yeah. a characteristic, like, of God. You know what I'm saying? I feel like having grace for somebody else. And that's how I look at Kanye. Is like, I feel like he could say things way different, but. He, if I can make mistakes, he can make mistakes. So the mistake might have been saying it how we said it, but let's pay attention to what he's trying to say. You know what I'm saying? And and I agree with what he's saying a little bit I because I, I also my I also okay. look at like the Jews and them being in power. If it ain't you, you're gonna be a victim of it. So I don't knock nobody. Like even the people who run the world, if it ain't them, it's gonna be somebody else. And now your family got to deal with whatever rules. So I don't knock nobody from it. I just don't like the evil intentions behind everything. Like if, if we gonna get empowered for our family to be the most powerful, that's cool. But how can we also make other people powerful too? Not keep this for ourselves and make everybody else suffer from the medicine to the food to the this to the that. Like that's just a little too much for me. I feel like with the Kanye thing, too, it kind of goes back like what you were saying earlier. Like, my parents, I feel like, like you said, like, your parents kind of didn't talk to you or, like, teach you how to express those feelings, like, when you were younger. Like, I'm kind of on the same thing. Like, I feel like as I get older, and maybe us as, like, humanity, like, we're, like, figuring out how to express ourselves better and um, how to deal with each other in, in, like, a better way. And it's, like, it's, it's funny to see, like, celebrities going through the same thing, like, Mm. Kanye even like on the Will Smith thing he kind of you see he was going through it like it just shows you bro that we're all human Mm. and we all can do better Mm -hmm. like it's like I and I I think one of the one of the things I want to kind of come back to the world is like people growing like we kind of got stuck in this phase where people can't grow no more they say this one thing or do this one thing and it's like you have this image of them forever it's like but no people can grow bro people can change definitely yeah I agree I mean, I've seen it in real life, though. People even, change their life, so. Yeah, like, even, and then, bro, even on the music industry, that the, the she, a lot of shit he was saying was facts. It's um, the music industry is pretty much run in a way to where it's not the most beneficial for artists, and mm-hmm. that's that's not really how it should be. You know what I'm saying? Um, that stuff get it make it just gets so deep, bro. I just look at because it's it, all the problems in the world. I can't fix them. I can't fix all of them, and I'm a victim to some of them, but. I still have a life and I still can wake up today and tomorrow and figure out what I want to do with it. Like, speak out against evil and stuff. Yeah, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to take and use my 100 years the best as I can. I can. Like, I can't save everything. I can't get next to Putin and tell him not to bomb this. I can't do all of that. You know what I'm saying? Man, but what I can do. It's really some crazy shit going on, like with the whole nuclear wars yeah, and shit. Like, we really in a, lot. a It's like a lot of tension right now. And it's like, it, but, it, but, if, if, but if I can save somebody from committing suicide, then I'm good. Like, I'm cool with that. Over the money, over any of that junk. Because believe it or not, I turned out a lot of money to become a Christian. 
especially with like industry songwriting and stuff like that, I turned it down because my heart just won't let me do it. I can't know knowing that music is so influential. I can't get on there and call my wife no B. I can't get on there and encourage nobody to shoot, do drugs, any of that. And I don't knock no one that do it, but I'm not about to be the one to tell you to do it, especially when my daughter go to a middle school and a girl just overdosed from it. You know what I'm saying? It's like middle school though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And it's like like I said, I just gotta take accountability. So I can't be out here writing these songs for Cardi B doing whatever I want because that's just goes against what my heart want. You know what I'm saying? So and it's like it's not a it's not about the money. It was at one point, but it's like what good would having a million dollars do be for me if I'm still broken as a person? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what good would it be? Yeah, man. Um, accountability, <laughs> self awareness. Um, I was just talking to somebody about this yesterday. Um, we we're talking about just like other brands and stuff. I'm not even gonna say no names for it, but it's like I feel like people get to this this point where they start doing stuff for like the clicks and the money, and it's like, but and they kind of just disregard the impact they have. Mm-hmm. They don't even care if they're if they're poisoning the youth. Like, to, like it's it's cool to them or whatever. It's like so. I th- but I think I think it's changing though. Yeah. I think we getting slow. Like we're going through these different phases. Like I think we're slowly getting towards more that like um, just positive stuff. You know what I'm saying? And the people that actually start getting power, like realizing their impact and and, and trying to fucking change the world for the better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um. Um. What what, what you working on right now? You so said you got Ricky Miyagi yeah. for Christ. Ricky Miyagi for Christ is actually done. When you got a date for that or anything? Nope. And. This is one of the things I be talking to God about all the time. Like, I know tomorrow not promise, so I should drop it today. You know what I'm saying? But my man's Marcus, he's so big, like, in the Christian community. Like, he get millions of streams, like, when he drop an album. Like, first day, 800,000 streams Jeez. and stuff like that. So, I'm always on his project at least six times. So, I'm waiting for him to drop. Then I'm going to start dropping my own music. Because um, only time people hear me rapping as a Christian artist is on someone else's music. I'm always a feature. So, it's like... I didn't want to jump straight out and throw a whole album of me out under that genre. So I'm waiting for him to drop his um jump, and then I'm going to start dropping singles, and then I'm going to drop the project. I have like a build up for it. Mm-hmm. How do you think the Christian community going to um, Re- react to your... Uh, I think I'm one of the realest you? ones to ever do that jump, uh, for real. So it's like, because that was my approach. It's like, it's like I, I listen to Christian music, and I... And I um. I dealt with this because everybody's in different stages. Like some people literally might be at that stage of full submission to God where you're literally just happy all the time. With me, I'm in like the spiritual warfare thing where it's like me and my wife might go at it one day and then I let, you know, a negative spirit tell me how to respond and then I'm feeling bad because I'm talking to God and he like, man, you should have did it this way. You should have did it that way. Like, so I I always, when it comes to making like I said, unless it's Christian music, it sounds too happy for where I'm at in my life. So it's like I wanted to make something that represent what what I feel. Everybody feel. I feel like everybody got a little bit of depression. Everybody a little sad. Everybody want more love. So I try to. I want people to be able to play future and then play me talking about God and it feel the same. But it just ministered to you different. The message is different. Like uplifts you a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I did it. Like it's. I'm telling you. Like for real. Like, bro. It's gonna be a problem, bro. Bro, I love it, bro. That might be a fire spot to leave him at. We like an hour in. Oh uh, yeah. Um, did you want to touch on anything else? I mean, I I just want um, like I said, as a Christian, I don't want nobody to wake up tomorrow and be like, oh Jesus walked on water and did all this. The only thing I want you to do <laughs> is open the Bible and read it uh, and and digest the information. Take out because. Take out all the opinions you heard from everybody else and just read it for yourself. Like, whatever you want, you can read the Quran, read whatever you want. Let something guide you because we are lost. We don't know what to do. Like, we don't know what to do. Without GPS, what will we do? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm so used to using GPS. Like, I don't even... Like when you go to a new place, it takes me like five times to go there before I remember. Because right, I'm not even so paying imagine the, road, the phone like, stopped today. Oh, yeah, you still need to find your way. So now, looking at just from traveling up and down the street, think about traveling a hundred years of your life. Like you need some type of guidance. Like, and that's just how I look at at the Bible. And then 
the truth will set you free, man. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, yo. And people like it sounds crazy because we live in a world where it's like I'm just another Christian at this point. It's like I could be looked at as representing the truth or just spewing more lies. Like cause the world we live in spills it. But I always ask myself if I could see the purity in Jesus's message. Anyone who tell me not to believe in it, you're operating in of the wrong spirit. Because now you don't want me to be better for myself. You know what I'm saying? So I always pay attention to that. Any whether it's like the witchcraft that they get into, the self love and all that, it sounds good. But if it's not gonna make me look at me and all my mistakes and want to change my heart, I don't want nothing to do with it. And anything that try to talk me out of doing this because I see the benefits of it in my own marriage, in my relationship with my kids, in my music. In all these situations of my life, don't come to me trying to tell me that I'm tripping, Jesus not real, like any of that stuff. Like, so yeah. my thing to everybody is, I know people hurting, bro. Like, I know I'm not the only one that come home at night and cry in my car. I know I'm not, but we live in a world where you can't express it. You, it's, it's we're boxed in. Like, so my thing is to go to the Bible so you can unleash all of that. Like, it's someone you can talk to, someone who already know what you've been through. So it's not like I can't just sit here and tell you I'm I was addicted to porn. You get what I'm saying? I would be uncomfortable doing that, but I can talk to God about it because He was there every step of the way. So it's it's, it's kind of like therapy a little bit for me. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy to think that God's watching you beat off. <laughs> what's even more crazy is to think is to think that. When you being sneaky, yeah, you think really you, not, you yeah, not, yeah. So like right now, <laughs> I'm up here trying to be good. Like I still don't smoke. Like I'm cool with being honest. Like I still smoke weed. My thing right now is just I don't want to be representing God and then be up here smoking it. But to think I can get my act together for you, but not for God, is something I'm gonna go home and deal with tonight. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's just how my relationship work with him. But it, it, at least I'm thinking about that. You get what I'm saying? Before now, I just been up here doing what I want. You know what I'm saying? Like, and like I said, it's just that extra check. Like, okay, you can do this for Selmir, but you can't stop smoking for me. You know what I'm saying? And it's that's like, deep. That's deep. yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like some people, I want to smoke, I can smoke. Is smoking really helping you? It might make you feel like it is, but it's killing you on the inside. So it's not. So I have to respect his decision to not want me to smoke because it's for the betterment of myself, yeah. regardless of how I feel. And last point, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> revelation about weed for me one day, even though it's hard to stop smoking, is it made me sit there and think for 12 to 15 years, you don't trust yourself as your peer self. So you got to get high every day. And that made me wonder what it is about myself that I don't trust. Because I have to put myself in a different state of mind just to function. So what is it about you at your peer state that you don't trust? And that's just something I've always been trying to figure out. And that's it, man. I, mean, I love it, bro. Thinking, look, thinking, I love like, it. You right. gave me a lot to think about. Um, I love the the transformation that you're going through. Like I'm excited to see where you go with it, bro. Ricky Miyagi for Christ. Coming soon. This year or next year? Can this we, year. This year? Mm. Um. Hell yeah, bro. Thank you for sliding. I appreciate it. Um, hell yeah, man. All the bros' links will be in the description. Y'all tap in, man. Like I always say, fuck with the artist from the 757. And um, we're going to see y'all next week. Appreciate Peace. it, bro. Hell yeah, appreciate you.